Conversation on to vehicle and asset finance. First Rand's West Bank is South Africa's largest vehicle and asset financier. Standard Bank uh, vehicle and asset uh, finance. Sorry, guys, we have to pick it up again. Standard vehicle and asset. That finance. is actually what it's called. Is it standard? Yeah, standard oh, vehicle okay, and asset sorry. finance. That's okay. what they call it. All right, the can you pick it up there. So I was also dragging you out there because I, I sensed that maybe we hadn't taken enough time yeah. in that space. Hey. Yes. Mm. Yes. We'll check the time off at the break. Mm. Well, let's move the conversation on to vehicle and asset finance. First Rand's West Bank is South Africa's largest vehicle and asset financier. Standard vehicle and asset finance is also a significant operator, but who is the biggest and who is the best? Jean-Pierre. Biggest isn't always the best. Uh, and if you go back 10 years, the old brand that Standard Bank used to use for their vehicle and asset finance was Stanic. And in those days, they were uh, almost equal in size to West Bank. But since then, whether it's a branding change or just being more aggressive in the market or different strategies to try and access uh, the point of sale when it comes to vehicle dealerships, West Bank has grown faster and is the bigger one of the two now. Um, it is more profitable as well if you look at the return on capital of West Bank versus VAF, vehicle and asset finance, within Standard Bank. Um, and then lastly, within West Bank, you also do have some unsecured lending. They have a stake in direct access. So not only do they finance the acquisition of cars and uh, plant and machinery, but also unsecured lending. So if you put all of that together, West, West Bank is quite a bit larger than vehicle and asset finance of Standard Bank. VAF. <laughs> vehicle asset finance. I think they should start with a name change. <laughs> look, it isn't the most elegant brand, but look, South Africa's love affair with a car continues unabated. I mean, in this country, people prioritize their drive very significantly and everybody who's got a permanent job wants to have a shiny set of wheels. The relationship is forged at the level of the dealership so it's a very competitive space where the car dealerships are constantly being fought over by these two players as well as others like Nedbank's finance division called Motor Finance Corporation. Very very profitable and customers seem to have rocks in their heads at the kind of products they buy. 60 month loans with huge residuals balloon payments it's really just people will do anything to get their hands absolutely. on that absolutely and to have the lowest possible installment even though when you'd run the numbers you'd be amazed at you know in effect how much you're paying and what the kind of rates are and so on it all translates into very profitable businesses for these guys i don't expect that to change yes you know you could find that one or other gets a bit of a toehold over the other with mercedes-benz or with bmw or with toyota Many of them actually operate those business divisions. You know, so you see that one of these things is actually Is West branded. Bank the clear leader, though? Well, I think they are if you look at the stats, because these things get reported in those D9000 numbers or whatever they are to the Reserve Bank, which monitors credit in this country. So you can tell from one year to the next, one of them is getting its head slightly forward. But it's very competitive. The rates are quite similar. The guys watch each other's best deals quite closely. So I don't think anyone's going to gobble up 15% market share from another. I expect they're both going to continue to do well in this space. Anything that could topple one or the other at this point in the vehicle finance space? Well, I think in West Bank, I've alluded to the exposure to unsecured credit. And as Paul mentioned earlier, there is a bit of concern about that market and the strong growth we have seen, which has benefited them. But are we now at one point in time where it's maybe a bit unsustainable, where the profitability could reverse if you have ba bad debts uh, spiking in the unsecured lending space? So that's one concern for West Bank that they need to monitor, seeing that they've done very well when it comes to non-interest income in terms of the fees and insurance that they sell. Remember in banking, you can always look at revenue both in terms of net interest revenue, your interest income, and non-interest income. And in that sense, uh, West Bank has done better, but there's some concern about unsecured lending. What about commercial vehicle finance, JP? I mean, who's got the bigger business in that space and how significant is that? Because you know we hear these stories about how the corporates are doing nothing and not actually investing, but they presumably also fund trucks and heavy diggers and all that kind of thing as well. Is there a clear leader in, in that space, the commercial vehicle space? Uh, the companies don't split out the, uh, the disclosure of what is pure vehicles and what is other yellow metal and other machinery, but I would think that West Bank would be larger than Standard Bank in that line as well. And with some concern about uh, uh, mining uh, capex at the moment, there could be some concern once again that those customers that have bought yellow metal on finance 
could become uh, more problematic in terms of when they need to repay those loans because of the downturn in commodity markets that we have seen. So this, this unsecured lending is a theme that we are going to pull throughout this whole discussion and yeah. it's certainly a concern that uh, you feel we should Yeah, look, it's a sectoral further. concern, but I don't want to give the wrong impression. I'm actually not concerned about it at all. I think it's one of those areas where profitability might reduce because the banks might decide to pull back on the levers a little bit and they may be uh, regretting some of the loans they gave in the past. But we've lived through this kind of cycle before and banks make money from money. It's a fabulous business. You give somebody a loan and a couple of days later at the end of the month you write up your profits and you say that's your new balance. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to make anything, you don't have to deliver everything. It's just wonderful. It's like magic. So they're going to continue to do fabulous business on all fronts, including in this area. It's just that maybe they're not going to be stepping on the gas as so much we, as they were before. So we've all missed the boat. We should have become bankers.